Hi everyone, this is Chris from Felgrau Productions, and I'm here working on a pretty big Russo-Japanese War 10mm commission. Uh, Pendragon recently put out a new line. I'll actually be doing a review of that line in a little bit. But I've been working on the kind of uh, the second Japanese uniforms, which is when they transitioned from their blue uniforms to the khaki. And I had some thoughts about uniforms in the 20th century. Uh, especially in the area between uh, starting with World War I and going into when camo becomes kind of a thing. Um, a lot of uniforms are some mix of uh, gray, green, brown, and khaki. And that's it. Um, and especially at smaller scales, that can be incredibly boring looking. So how do we keep those uniforms from looking boring. So this isn't going to be a painting guide. I'm not going to walk through every single step of painting these figures, but I'm going to walk you through the important steps of how to make otherwise fairly monochromatic military colors, like khaki in this case, a little more exciting and a little more pop on the table. So you can see I'm painting a lot of Japanese right here. And uh, of course, you're going to want to start with the color you're using. Now, these are a khaki color. Uh, one of my favorite khakis is Vallejo's German Camouflage Beige World War II, um, but really almost any uh, light khaki is going to work. Now, I have primed these a medium gray. Uh, what color you prime them is not the most important choice, but I would recommend priming them gray or even white, not black. If you prime them black, they will be dark. The whole thing is going to be dark. Um, and at that point, you're probably going to have to do two coats of your base coat instead of one um, to really get the color to show through. Now, we actually don't really care too much if the coverage is not perfect. Um, as you can see here, there is still a little gray showing through on these figures, but that's okay because we are going to be adding layers to this, so that is not going to be noticeable later on. The next steps we're going to do is, uh, these are relatively simple figures. Uh, the boots are black, the hat uh, brim is black, uh, the face is going to be uh, whatever skin tone you want to use for, uh, you know, Caucasian, Asian, uh, African, Middle Eastern, whatever. Um, brown rifle. Uh, they have some brown webbing, if I can get these tiny figures into focus. And then um, these guys, if you can see it, have a, uh, I don't know if it's a jacket or a bedroll, um, that's going to be a bit of a secondary color, and that's one of the cheats. So I'm going to fast forward until I have everything painted up in their base coats, and then we'll talk about what to do next. Now that all the base coats are on, and as you can see, the majority of these models are khaki. Uh, a little bit of ivory you can see for the uh, waders. Um, obviously, on this particular model, the webbing is uh, kind of a natural leather brown, and then I have skin tone. So it's, it's a mostly monochrome model, but there's one big pop, and that is the bedroll or jacket. Now, looking at reference, Obviously, it's up to you on how accurate you want to be. I saw reference for these Japanese, for the Russo-Japanese War, that when they had their khaki uniforms, the blanket, bedroll, whatever, was kind of a grayish blue. Uh, and I wanted to pump up the blue a little bit more, although it will end up looking a little bit more desaturated after the next couple of steps, because that secondary color is going to help give some visual interest to the figure so it's not just a khaki blob. And then the step after that, which is going to give us some depth, because the key here is I'm not painting to a competition standard. I'm painting these to pop. Contrast is the word. So we need dark darks, we need light lights, and we need them next to each other. So I'm going to be using a wash. For this particular figure, I'm going to be using Army Painter Strong Tone, Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade. When I did some of the early war uniforms, uh, in their blue, I instead used uh, dark tone because uh, it was less earth colors and more just you know dark recesses. And you can see these are done. You can see there's a lot of contrast on these figures where the darks are darks and the lights are light. And then the blanket is kind of this desaturated gray, which I might even go back and change to give it a little bit more interest. Now, could you prime these black or dark brown and just paint onto them? Yes, you can. But the reason I'm going to be using a wash strong tone is because it brings out all of the details. So there's eyes sculpted into these faces. There's mouths. There's 
lines where the fingers are. And so the strong tone wash is going to bring that out. Whereas if you had just primed this black, primed this dark brown, and then painted over it, a lot of that detail is going to be lost. So going for what I call a high tabletop quality for 10 millimeter. I'm not gonna make you watch me paint strong tone on, just make sure it doesn't pull on. We'll come back and then I'll show you the key things, which is the highlighting steps to really push that contrast. Once we get the darks, we gotta bring it back up to the lights. So after my wash is settled, you can see the results here with the soldier here on the left. Now, this is certainly more than acceptable to go onto the tabletop, but I really want to push this to a higher standard. Now, one thing that I did do and forgot to film is that these, um, uh, they're not patis, uh, leg wraps, um, waders, whatever you call them. Um, these were ivory and this was a light khaki. And then when putting the uh, strong tone wash over them, they kind of all melded together. So I put some more ivory back on these uh, waders so that you can clearly see that they are a different color from the rest of the figure. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my original base color, German camo beige, and I'm going to focus painting on certain things. The top of the hat, most of the outer layer of the arm, his knees. Um, this particular cap has these um, neck and shoulder flaps. So I will be doing a little bit along the edges of that, the bottom of his tunic, and then not going to do the back of his legs. No one's ever going to look, A, look at those, and B, they are in shadow. And that's already going to punch up the contrast a decent amount on this figure. In fact, I already did it to the rest of these figures. And then what I'm going to do, and this is really going to depend on your color, um, because I'm using a khaki beige, I'm going to use an ivory, or you could use a white, to brighten this up. Uh, I'm using a roughly 50-50 mix. Um, when I do this with uh, German uniform colors like Feldgrau, I often use Feldgrau and then a very light uh, gray to keep it in that grayish family. And I'm going to take that hue, but this one I'm going to apply very selectively. So I'm not going to touch the knees here. Over here, I'm just going to touch this very exposed elbow. I'm just going to uh, do the front of his cap. On the other side, I'm just going to do the very bottom hem of his tunic. Might not even be strictly necessary. And then the very edges of these little flap things. If his shoulder was exposed, I would do his shoulder, but the flap is there, so I'm going to cover that. And that's really about it. And now you can see, oh, there was one other place. For the edge of his shirt, his tunic meets his hand, because that's going to help distinguish the edge of the tunic from the hand. And that's really about it. It doesn't take that much, especially the secondary step. And on the tabletop, this might look a little exaggerated, in the video, but on the tabletop, you're clearly going to be able to distinguish the different parts of this figure. And that is going to go a long way in making them stand out on the tabletop. The one other thing that you might want to do is the blue here. I'm going to do maybe a little bit of highlighting on the blue just to brighten it up a little bit on some of the edges. Uh, mix in uh, probably not an ivory, but uh, a light gray into that. But that is about it. And this is a more or less universal technique on 10 or 15 millimeter figures to make them tabletop ready. Does not take that much extra time after the wash and they look pretty good. And you can really tell what all the different parts of the figures are. Now I got about a hundred more of these here, so I'm gonna go off and finish them. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. And I'm gonna be doing a review of the entire Pendragon uh, Russo-Japanese War line, because I have one of every single one of those, and uh, that'll be coming out soonish at some point. So again, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Let me know, and thank you very much for watching.